last day of Georgia's Quality Conference. Um, we're really happy to have Rick Wade from University of Utah and he'll tell us about geometry of hyperbolic concrete. Not fun too. Thanks for the invite to the book. It's been really great. great um, yeah, I'm going to try and, yeah, this is going to be a high tech two media talk. Um, using both whiteboard and black, uh, blackboard. Um, I'm going to start talking about mapping class group stuff. And maybe I'll do that on some whiteboards and then and then divide the two, divide that and start. What's that? Switch to the dark side? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for, for stuff about automorphisms of free groups. Um, okay, so. Uh, so in the, in the in the mapping class group, well, um, we have the mapping class group with some surface. This this acts on uh, the curve graph of the surface, uh, which we've seen a, a couple of like in, in quite a few talks uh, this week. And this this curve graph is very nice. Um, and I want to start by. Uh, listing a few things about the curve graph, some nice properties of the curve graph. And, and then I'm going to talk about some um, graphs that AutoFN act on and try and look at, compare these properties. So uh, some nice things, so yeah, so let's start with nice things about uh, this curve graph. Um, so I guess the first thing um, is that the, the curve graph, uh, if you, you have, this is a metric graph where you, if you give all the edges length one, then then this this graph is is delta hyperbolic. And this is a result of Mazur-Minsky, and uh, we saw Richard Webb's really nice <coughs> unicorn-based proof of this earlier in the week. Um, another nice thing, and what order was I going to do these? So, um, if you take an element of the, the mapping class group on the surface, you, you can look at the dynamics of how this element acts on, on the curve graph. And one of two things can happen. So either, um, so the, the first thing that could happen is that um, there exists a power this is actually um, Kind of uniform, at least for a fixed surface, there is some uniform power of um, of phi uh, fixing a vertex of uh, the curve. So no, if you land in case one, you didn't need to know what phi was in order to know what the power was. That's yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can. I can just take some power, like to, to yeah. check when you're in case one. You take phi to the power, yeah. which is fixed, which you know in advance. And and that power is um, so so phi itself, um, if it's not pseudo and also it's it's going to permute some set of disjoint curves on the surface. So the, depending on the complexity of the surface, the size is bounded, and that gives you a power. And uh, the the second. Uh, situation. So, so if, if phi um, doesn't fix the vertex, so in this case phi is, um, is pseudo and also, and um, x uh, logsodromically <coughs> on the curve graph. Um, so this means that uh, the, so the order there's a if you if you look at the map n uh, goes to 
to the n. So if you look at the orbit map, so if x is some point in the curve graph, and you, you, you take the orbits under the, the, the uh, method <coughs> class, then this is uh, a QI embedding from z into the curve graph. You can think of this element as kind of having some invariant quasi quasi line that is translatable. On. It's very nice. Um, right, so there's this nice dichotomy in in the actions of given specific elements of the Another another nice thing. Um, so point stabilizers so if I look at the subgroup um, of the map of a map class group fixing a given curve, um, there are undistorted <coughs> in uh, the mapping class group. Okay, which means that the the injective map from this subgroup into the mapping class group is a quasi-isometric embedding. So, so if you want to do something about like the global geometry of the mapping class group, you can you can do bootleg arguments where you, you use the geometry of the curve complex and then you know that the geometry of these stabilizers are, are also well behaved with respect to the whole mapping class group. It's really nice. Okay, and uh, the fourth point is that uh, the isometry group of this curve graph, uh, if you look at just the abstract isometries of the curve graph, then this is exactly the, the, the mapping class. So you, there aren't kind of any, you, there aren't any extra isometries of this, this curve graph. It's exactly, exactly the mapping. Um, so, in this talk, uh, I'm going to list some complexes that the outer automorphism group, uh, the free group acts on, and talk about these four points for these complexes. That's kind of the, the motivation. Uh, uh, this, this talk. Okay, now we're going to switch mediums. And, uh, instead, we'll talk about out of the fact. Okay, so, um, and so this is the, the automorphism group of the free group uh, quotient to that by the subgroup uh, consisting of the inner automorphisms. So, um, <coughs> let's look at some graphs. So the first one I want to look at here is um, so let's look at the free factor complex. Okay, I'm going to call this F F N. So this is a graph. Uh, the vertex set. So the vertices of this graph are um, conjugacy classes. of free factors. So a, a vertex, I use this notation to become, <coughs> uh, I should say proper free factors. Of any, any rank, right? Yes, yeah. A proper non-zero, right? Yeah. Proper, would you count as the, the trivial element as a proper free factor of uh, so to ask a really dumb question, like sure. factor, do you mean like quotient or? No, that, that's very, so, so by factor I mean that, that there is some basis of the free group x1 to xn and a is equal to just say x1 to 
to x k of some k less than that. So that's what we mean by by, by free factor. But equivalently, the free loop is a star b, right? Right. Yeah. So so equivalently, you, you, yeah, there there is some decomposition of the free group and some yeah, like graphic groups, but you know, you're right thing. <coughs> this is kind of best uh, notation. And we, we join two free factors by an edge. Um, so we have, this is confusing, so there's going to be sometimes where I want to use edges to denote edges in the graph, and sometimes I'm going to use edges to denote best uh, decompositions, but hopefully it will be fairly clear uh, what those distinctions are. And uh, so we have an edge uh, connecting two of these these three factors if um, some conjugate of A is contained in, contained in B. So up to conjugacy, A is contained in B. So it's a directed graph? Or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, in fact, all, all these graphs I'm going to talk about for a bit, and they're going to be directed in some kind of containment surfaces. Oh, so, so let's go through these four points. Uh, so the first point is that uh, FFN is delta hyperbolic. And this is a result of uh, that's been a thing from a couple of years ago. Um, uh, the, in the same way as what happens with the, the curve graph, there is a nice dichotomy in terms of how elements act on this three factor complex. So um, if phi is some automorphism, either some uniform power of phi uh, fixes a free factor, or um, phi x loxodromically on um, on the free factor graph. So, to, sorry, just to check intuition. This is pretty far from being what you might expect as an obvious analog of the curve graph, right? I mean, there's no disjointness associated to edges. There's no, these are not like one dimensional. So, uh, yeah, there are, in, in one sense, the, where this comes from is rather than viewing a curve, rather than viewing a vertex as, um, as a curve on the surface, you could instead view a vertex of the uh, curve graph is like a component, okay. as one component of, of the surface. Oh, wait. Okay. Right? And, and that's kind of what's... You mean like a subsurface? <coughs> yeah, like a subsurface. <coughs> you know, the, like, if you have a sub... Here we're just picking the... The difference here is obviously, uh, if, you're, if you pick a subsurface of the surface, then you know what the complementary subsurface is. Right? And in this situation, to don't, right? You can pick a free factor. If I tell you what A is, there are like there are infinitely many choices for what B could be. But if you if you think about B as a, is like a framing of the complement, I mean, or what you call it, bordering, like giving it a basis of arcs or something. Right. If A is x one to x k, why isn't B just x k plus one to x n? Well, because the there are lots of choices in the basis. Yeah, sure. Well, you, you can also add a bunch of copies of x1 through xk to this. Yeah, right? yeah. You totally screw it up. You know, yeah. so, so for instance, in, yeah, so, so in f2, if you write f2 as ab, and I choose the, 
the conjugate is the class of A as one of these three factors, then, yeah, yeah. then I can take B A to the K for any K to be the, the, other, the, the other factor. They're all non-conjugate. Yeah, they're all non-conjugate. Yeah. This is sort of also analogous to Tietz building, where like vertices are like uh, sub linear subspaces of a vector space, and there's a containment relation. Correct. And so yeah. it's sort of maybe more analogous to, to that. Yeah, it's it's very hard. Like, so there are a lot of kind of ways of pushing proofs from Mackin class groups across to FFN, and like the kind of rough picture, like if you if you squint or you're drunk, it looks the, the proof looks the same, but kind of the details, like these analogies, are never as kind of pleasing as you would really like them to be. Just, just never works out that nicely. Uh, okay. um, but, but this this analogy is quite so kind of we view uh, we have this notion of pseudo sub elements in FFN called fully irreducible elements, and this dichotomy works nicely in that situation. So either you're if you're fully irreducible, if you're an irreducible, you act loxodromically on the three factor complex. And if you're not, if you're a reducible element of the automorphism group, then some power fixes a vertex of this three-factor group. So this, this part of the analogy works very nicely with respect to the three-factor complex. Um, yeah. <coughs> so what doesn't work as nicely? So, and this is also, this is also best in the thing. Uh, we understand uh, point stabilizers here. So point stabilizers are stabilizers of three factors. And uh, in this case, so if the rank of a three factor is equal to n minus 1, so these kind of maximal size uh, vertices of this graph, then, um, then the stabilizer of A uh, is undistorted in uh, F of N. So, so far, so good. However, uh, if the rank of A is less than N minus 1, then the stabilizer of A is uh, distorted. So, so these kind of you don't have these nice uh, undistorted stabilizers. What is it? What's that? What is it? Uh, so this is uh, Handel. <coughs> and the fourth point is uh, uh, we don't know what the so. I don't know what the asymmetry group for this three factor complex is. Uh, the gas is out of M, but it is actually, it's actually quite hard to, to try and get groups, to get to groups with that. So at least the N is at least three or something. Right, yeah, okay. I, th I think I should fix N greater than or equal to, like fix N to be bigger than three for the duration of this talk, actually, because otherwise I'll start lying. Is this, uh, does this have some nice description, like a paragraph or something? Like that? Yeah. So why what? So there's, there's no edges. There's no edges. Uh, because it's proper, yeah. yeah. Okay, so right, that's 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 one of these complexes, and it, it it's nice for the first two bullet points, and then the second two bullet points it's less nice. Okay, so let's try it. The second. So, so the next thing I want to talk about is the, the free splitting complex. Um, 
this is going to be called FSN. So, um, so a splitting uh, is an action of uh, Fn on a simplicial tree T is kind of the, cut of the Basset tree associated to the splitting if you want to think about the downstairs picture and uh, it is free if all edge stabilizers are trivial And so uh, we can get a complex and build up a complex out of these free splittings by saying the vertex, you know, so a vertex is a free splitting. Um, so I'm going to say that as an action of Fn on a tree. Um, and we have an edge between two trees, T and T prime, if I can obtain T by collapsing some edges in T prime. Equivariantly. Equivariantly, yeah. If uh, T is obtained from T prime by equivariantly collapsing Finding the splitting you get as a three, as a three Yeah, so um, so this is yeah, you you could so this is like slight this is like changing the vertex set of the curve complex to be the set of curves on a surface and saying that uh, two sets of curves are adjacent if one is contained in the other. So it's a slightly it's like, uh, like a so is this, it's the, very that is exactly the word <laughs> I was looking for, Randy, thank you. Okay, so this thank you. Like the barycentric subdivision of the, so what were you going to say? Okay. So the other language is, is a vertex is like A star B and an edge <coughs> A star B star C or something. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, there is a, a third point here. Phi has banded orbits, uh, but no periodic orbits. <coughs> frustrating third uh, bullet point here for classification of 
a power element stack. Um, however, unlike the, the free factor complex, the free splitting complex is very nice for points three and four. So uh, the stabilizer of a tree is undistorted in uh, the fan. And uh, also, that's also hand on motion. And um, the isometry group of uh, the free vector complexes. Free splitting complex. Please keep telling me this. <laughs> <laughs> So this, this is equal to the fan, and I'm going to spell Javier's surname wrong if I don't actually read it. And so this is a result of uh, Suto uh, Aramayana. Other than this, this point two, which is which is kind of worse, these these third and fourth points are nicer for the for the free splitting. The mapping class group, more important than three for me is just that the stabilizers are mapping class groups of smaller surfaces. Are those things true? Or yeah, this, the stabilizers are nicer in this situation. The you right, they're roughly yeah. they're roughly it's roughly the, the the sum of stabilizers of the vertex group. Um, you can it around, right? Yeah, you can commute, but up to finite index, you're, you're, you're actually just looking at the, yeah. So, so these, these stabilizers are much, yeah, much nicer than, than in the, um, in the prefect of complex. Okay. So that's two, and um, the, the last, complex zone. So depending on what you <coughs> when you're trying to prove some theorem about that, that then you might have to choose what complex you're using carefully. So and and I want to just talk about one more complex that I'm going to focus on for the rest of the talk. And um, this is what happens when rather than, uh, I'm still going to look at splittings, um, but uh, so this is going to be the maximal, uh, maximally cyclic splitting complex. consist of splittings, but rather than insisting that my edge stabilizers are trivial, I'm going to allow them to be cyclic subgroups of the free group. And when maximally comes in, I, I want these to be maximal cyclic subgroups. I, I want them to be closed undertaking roots in the free group. So the vertex set is, uh, so you have a splitting, and edge stabilizers are either um, trivial or maximal cyclic subgroups. Oh. And um, I'm going to give some examples in a bit about these. And then we have some edges. We're going to use the same edge relation as before can draw an edge between two splittings if T is obtained from T prime by equivariantly collapsing some, some edges. T 
is something from T prime by collapsing edges. So it would be like uh, A star B over Z, and then A star B star C both over Z. Yeah. But that'd be maximal Z. I'm going to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give some explicit examples. Yeah. This, I, I'm going to go through these four points and then, then I'm going to actually start looking at specific examples of these. Um, I, actually, we don't know t too much about this complex. Um, so it is delta hyperbolic. Uh, this is a result of bright man. Uh, two, uh, I'm just going to erase this and put a question mark because I don't know. Um, I kind of hope that this there's some kind of dichotomy here, uh, but I don't know how to prove it. Yeah, he's bad in orbit, so he would be the free splitting count. I, I hope that you don't have banded orbits. I hope that if you have banded orbits, then you're actually fixing the vertex in this one place. So the, the splitting complex includes this complex. Yes. I guess you don't know the, what the geometry of that kind looks like. Right, so it's not a it's it's not a QI embedding. Okay. Know that much. Uh, there are um, there are elements that act hyperbolically on the free splitting complex that, that fix points in this, this cyclic splitting complex. The motivation though is this one kind of sounds like the curve complex. Is that yeah. Right? Yeah. This is this feels more like the curve complex. There's some kind of vague idea that the free splitting complex should be like the arc complex, and this should be like the arc and curve complex. But again, it's like trying to, a lot of this is kind of trying to push analogies maybe slightly too far. Um, but, you know. Um, I don't know anything about stabilizers. And um, every time I look at this problem, I change my mind. Uh, as far as whether I think they're distorted or unsorted. Um, uh, but, and the one thing I want to talk about today is that I do know that the isometry group uh, is equal to, to the actual automorphism group of the free group. And uh, so this is joint work. I should say all of this is joint work with Emil Pulvers. So I want to talk a bit more in a bit more detail about this this last point today. Any more questions? Okay, okay 25 minutes. That's good. Let's look at some examples of of, of vertices in this uh, in this complex. Um, yeah, let, let's do that. Okay, so. So what do one-edge splittings look like? Um, so either you have, so this, these come in two flavors. You either have um, free ones or non-free one-edge splittings. So uh, if it's free, Either uh, we have this kind of nice A star B picture, or uh, we have a HN extension. So it looks like A um, with a loop, and the, the rank of A is N minus 1. Or uh, it's non-free, and in which case the uh, the the one-edge splittings they they look like this. You have a you have some element of a that I'm going to call W, and you split across, and the second vertex. Uh, the stabilizer of this is a free group on B and W, where so the free group 
is a slitting A star B, and W is some element of A. So for example, um, you could have a splitting that looks like this. So I could have AD. I can take the commutator of AD as the edge stabilizer. And then the stabilizer of this uh, next vertex, this last vertex looks like C, say a free group on C and AB. And this is a splitting of, this is a cyclic splitting of the free group of <coughs> And uh, then there's the H and N version of this, where um, so I have some edge stabilizer T. Um, the the base vertex group looks like a um, let's call this X, and um, there's a conjugation relation in this H and N extension where uh, T x. T inverse is some w where w is a word in a. So that's, that's the two types of, of Basset group, kind of Basset decompositions you get from, from these one-edge splittings. Um, and I'm going to try and draw some, do a topological picture of what's going on here in, in a bit. Yeah. So uh, that, that first example, you could, could you have written that as A star B over W? A star B. No, your first non-free example. How is that different from A star B over W? A star B over what? Uh, sorry, A star will make B bigger. I mean, so uh, call, call that C, the thing generated by B and W. Yes. I, isn't that A star C over W? Yes. Okay, so, but, so and you're saying that's for when both but sides are free? Is, so. But this is nicer. This is, this is, this is better than... It just seems asymmetric, right? Because W is in both sides. It is asymmetric. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it is asymmetric. And the, the point is, I'm going to... Hopefully, get around to like a three. There's a three manifold picture of what's going on, uh, where what you're doing is you can view these free splittings as some kind of sphere in the double candle body, and these these non-free versions are actually obtained by just sticking a handle on this sphere. Okay, and depending on what side you stick that handle, that's going to give you some asymmetry in the, the splitting. So that, yeah. But what you're saying here is that when you take uh, a, a star C over something, A star B over C, and A and B are free, and A star B, a star B over Z, you can get your, put, just push the Z to one side? And, yeah, okay. yeah, there, there is some, there, there's like a non-trivial dilemma that, that, I'm, that I'm avoiding talking about. Yes. But, yeah, that there's some kind of classification of what splittings of free groups look like that, that, that's implicit in this picture here. Yeah. sketchy proof, because I, I do want to just actually spend most of the rest of the time talk, drawing some more pictures of what these sliddings look like, but I'm going to do a very sketch proof uh, that, the, that the isometry group of, uh, what did I call this? FCN. FCN. So you know we we know that the, the free vector complex, free splitting complex, uh, sits inside uh, this this cyclic splitting complex. And was by the way around? Or no? Okay. No, this is yeah. This any free splitting no. is a, is also a cyclic splitting. Okay. Yeah. Because it's just a restriction on. The edge stabilizers. And this is a, the 
stabilizers are more restrictive. Asking the edge stabilizers of the splitting to be trivial is more restrictive than asking them to be maximal cyclic. Um, okay. And we know by uh, uh, the pseudo Aramatoya, uh, Aramayona result, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the isometry group of this complex is equal to the, the is equal to our Okay. Um, so where is the let's sketch this group? So here are some steps. So the first thing you do is you, you show that maximal and minimal splittings. So minimal splittings are just one edge splittings. Hey, sorry, this inclusion is because of this lemma, right? If you have h star b, you can sort of push over the... No, no, this, the inclusion follows straight from the definition. The vertices in this graph are splittings, yeah. and the vertices in this graph are splittings. The restriction on the edge stabilizers of the splittings to be in this complex is more restrictive than the restriction to be in, to be in this complex. This is just this is a graph of groups decomposition where all the edge stabilizers are trivial, and this is a graph of groups decomposition where either the edge stabilizers okay. are trivial or the yeah. Um, so you show the <coughs> maximal and minimal splitting. So minimal are just one edge, and maximal are I don't know how many edges, but you show that these are invariant. Uh, up to isometry under isometries. And this kind of this tells you that you know that the isometry group is preserving the number of edges in, in, in a split and when it acts on the complex. And um, also, uh, a splitting is determined by its adjacent one-edge splittings, the, the one-edge splittings it collapses to. So this allows you to focus on what the one-edge splittings are doing most of the time. Um, the next point is that, um, is that maximal pre-splittings um, have I guess, oops, I'm going to be very vague and say different looking links to um, maximal splittings with cyclic, with, with non-trivial edge stabilizers. <laughs> Maximal pre splittings are invariant, then you know that all pre splittings are invariant under the isometry group. And when you have this, you can then use uh, this super Aramayona implies um, we can uh, compose. Isometries by elements of as of n and assume 
the free splitting complex is, is fixed. So this reduces the problem to a question of, well, if I have an isometry of this complex where all the free splittings are fixed, I just need to show that this actually means that the whole complex is fixed. Sorry, Rick, did you say that, that in the second point here, every so every free splitting is the collapse of the maximal free splitting? Yeah. And so the and, and that's the entire basically the entire link of that vertex, they're all... Yeah, okay. so, the, so the link of a maximal yeah. vertex is just the set of collapses. Okay, that's, that's um, great. Right. Yeah. I guess the other thing, you, you need to, you, you can enlarge a free splitting to a maximal free splitting. Yeah. cyclic splitting is determined by its adjacent free splittings and we'd be done. Okay. This isn't true, <coughs> unfortunately. Um, yeah, this this isn't true. Okay. So so the definition um, a one edge Cyclic splitting is good. Well, actually, I'll just define what the bad ones are, and the good ones aren't bad. So it's bad if it is of the form. So if it looks like this. If it's one of these H&N extensions, where this conjugating word uh, this conjugating word fills A. It's not supported by any subfactor of A. It's a really bad word. And um, otherwise, um, it is good. And so after that, you prove a couple of lemmas. What does it mean, fills A? Uh, so, yeah, that's a good point. It's, w isn't supported on any free factor of A. So the, the smallest free factor containing W is the whole of A. So this is some stuff. Uh, and elements of the free group have a unique free factor support. They, they're contained in a unique smallest free factor. Uh, this is not obvious in any way. And um, the saying fills means that the smallest free factor that, that W is contained in is actually the whole of A. There's no proper free factor that contains W. Is there an analogy with the surface? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to draw a picture. Yeah. So I'm going to write some letters about good and bad splittings, and then I'm going to give a proof by picture. And that'll take 10 minutes, I imagine. Um, so there are two lemmas. Um, so good splittings are adjacent. Uh, gee, adjacent is the wrong word. A uh, common have yeah uh, distance to that's the word I want distance to from infinitely many uh, one edge free splittings and, 
angle determined by uh, by these three sweaters. Splitting and are determined by their adjacent good splittings. So, um, and these two lemmas are enough to finish the, the proof. So, because bad splittings are only adjacent to one free splitting and good splittings, uh, distance two, sorry, from infinitely many one edge free splittings, the good and bad splittings are invariant under the, the isometry group. Okay. And then this tells me that the that, that I can tell where a good splitting is mapped to by just looking at where its adjacent one edge free splittings are mapped to. So I know that the, when I add on all these good splittings to the free splitting complex, the isometry group is still out of band. And then this second lemma lets me know that these bad splittings are also well behaved. And that they're bad, but they're well behaved. Um, and I want to draw, so I want to draw this paper that, that should be out on the archive soon. Uh, we don't do it, we don't actually draw any pictures and use any topology in the paper at all. Um, we, it's all kind of combinatorial using Besser best theory, but there's a really nice picture of like, what's going on in, in terms of three manifolds here. Yeah. I just want to give some picture of what these, these bad, I'm going to draw a picture of a bad splitting. What's going on here? So, so, so in fact, these splittings actually have a one-to-one -one correspondence with um, systems of uh, spheres and tori in, um, in a double handle body. Um, so I'm going to take, this came up in Matt's book, this, this connected sum of the n copies of S1 plus S2. So the, these, you can view, um, by systems you mean collections of disjoint spheres and tori. Yeah, yeah, collections is, yeah, I have these families of spheres and disjoint spheres and tori. But, and then one way around, if you have such a family and you live to the universal cover of this, of this three manifold, this, this system of surfaces lift and, and the splitting is the jewel tree to, to this. And then, the other way around, and uniqueness is a theorem. It's harder to, to, to prove. <laughs> so, so, um, so, how do you view this manifold? So, 
the way that you uh, make build this manifold M is you, you take S3, you drill out 2N spheres, 2, 2N balls, sorry, and then you identify balls, that you identify these pairwise. And so to, to draw a splitting, I need to take a, uh, I can draw a tori in here, and as long as the torus doesn't bound a handle body, uh, isn't, isn't, doesn't bound a solid torus in this three manifold, I'll get a non-trivial split. So I'm going to draw the splitting corresponding to this, this, this bad splitting here, which is going to look like A, B, actually no it's not. Oh, okay, let's try this. A, B, C, A, B, C inverse with C. Um, so I'm going to call this sphere C because I'm awkward. And the loop through these two pairs becomes a correspondent to A and B just because of how I was thinking about this. So how do you draw this torus? Uh, this, this, is not, this is a non-separating torus. Okay? And what it does is it wraps over one, one end of these spheres corresponding to C, and then it runs through A and B corresponding to this commutator. Okay? So it runs through A, then it comes out here, and then it has to go through B. And then it has to go through A inverse. And then it goes out and it has to run through B inverse. And then it goes back and closes up on itself. Okay. So this is what this torus looks like. This is the picture of this splitting. And as you can see, uh, it's adjacent to only one sphere. Because this tube fills kind of the rest of the manifold, it's adjacent to this unique sphere here. It's the, this is the only, the only sphere it's adjacent to in the free splitting complex. Okay, that's a proof by picture. Okay, and then if you want to show that this is determined by good splittings, I can draw a good splitting that this is adjacent to that no other bad splitting is adjacent to. And to do that, I take the following torus. I just extend this round and then get this to follow the outside of um, the red torus, like this. Uh, oops. Okay. And this is a separating splitting, so it's a good splitting, and um, from the picture, no other bad splitting is, is going to be adjacent. This is no other bad splitting is going to be adjacent to this orange torus. Okay. 